Do you want to learn how to write horror? Because if so, I have an incredibly exciting interview for you today. I recently had the pleasure of interviewing Brianna Morgan, who is a proud member of the Horror Writers Association, the author of novels such as Mouthful of Ashes, plays such as Unboxed, and short story collections such as The Trick or Treater. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and watch this video until the end. I learned so much from talking to Brianna, and I know that you will too. So without further ado, let's welcome Brianna Morgan to the channel. Welcome to the channel. I'm so excited to have you on board and to do this interview. Um, I'm really excited to talk about horror and kind of in the celebration of spooky season, learn yes. a little bit more about how to write horror. Um, so why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Like, when did you start writing? When did you discover you wanted to write horror? Sure. So you might do this in the intro, but my name is Brianna Morgan. I am a horror author. I'm a member of the Horror Writers Association. And soon I will have published seven books. My seventh book comes out on October 4th. Yeah, it's really exciting. I've been seeing the Mouth of Ashes uh, stuff all over social media. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've i loved spooky stuff, I think, as long as I can remember. Uh, as a kid, I watched a lot of Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps and all of that stuff. And I remember when I first started watching it, I would kind of like hide, be hide behind the couch and peek out. I don't have to do that anymore, but everybody starts somewhere. So I I don't know. I've always been fascinated and scared with scary things. I read all the Goosebumps books and they gave me night terrors, but I still kept reading them. So I feel like that's all about horror now. Like I feel like every single time I, I watch something know. scary, I can't sleep that night, but I keep coming back to it. It's just something about it really fascinates me. I don't know why. Yeah, I feel like that tells you just about everything you need to know about me. The fact that <laughs> I was getting night terrors and I kept going back to it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't like there's just I think there's something really like people say that horror, there's a lot of escapism in horror and people just like, I don't know, are drawn to it because it seems really ludicrous. But whenever I am by myself at night in my room and it's dark, I'm like, is this really that crazy? Is it really? <laughs> right, right. You never know. There could be a ghost in the closet or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I thought that for our conversation today, we could center it around the topic of like how you scare your readers from an author's perspective, because I hear like a lot of people who I think want to write horror at least me when I was trying to learn I think that horror writing is kind of hard to do when you're like actually crafting a story because you don't know how much to explain or how little to explain because it's not quite as visual as like screen right. and stuff because you can't rely on the jump scares so it took me a long time to try to figure out like the way to approach making writing scary so I would love to talk about that and see how you approach that because obviously your books are very scary um <laughs> so you have a handle on how to do that um, so I thought that we could start by talking about what your favorite thing is about horror and what initially drew you to it. I would say my favorite thing about horror is like you mentioned that escapism. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's kind of like, I've always had anxiety and horror, consuming horror media is like a way of controlling the anxiety because it's like, I'm anxious, but I'm not anxious about my life. I'm anxious about the events that are happening in this, this made up narrative. And then, you know, there's right. kind of like the purging and when you're done, you kind of feel a weird sense of release, at least for me, it's it's very relieving. Yeah, that's so interesting that it's like, you get to kind of feel anxious, but you project it onto something else. So it doesn't, mm -hmm. that, that that's really interesting that the thing that you gravitate towards is also something that causes anxiety in a different way. <laughs> right, right. Like my, my partner doesn't really understand how I can find comfort in horror movies, but <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain that aspect of, you know, it gives you something to focus on rather than just, you know, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that, I'm worried about this. You get to focus on, you know, like, will this person escape the monster? Right. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. So how did you originally learn how to write horror? So I have always kind of leaned more into darker fiction. Um, in my college creative writing program, we were strongly encouraged to write literary fiction and I got in trouble a few times for writing literary fiction that veered a little too far over the science fiction horror line. So um, yeah, I just like, I love, I loved murder mysteries for a long time. I loved, you know, when kids shows would have like that one episode that didn't quite fit like a Halloween episode or something like that, that was just kind of unsettling. I loved the feeling that those episodes gave me and I kind of wanted to write that. And I discovered Stephen King at I think 12 or 13. I read Cujo and then from oh, there- yeah, That was, one scared me so much. I'm such a dog person, but like Cujo really got to me. 
Yeah, it was pretty rough. And it's a weird, it's a weird King book to start with. <laughs> There's a lot of like divorce drama and stuff like that in there. So I don't, I don't know, but I, I've been hooked ever since. So I, I'd love to hear more about your experience in a creative writing program. If you kind of knew what you wanted to be writing already, but you had teachers and other people pushing you in another direction, where did you go to college and how did you find that that writing program helped shape you as a writer? Sure. So I went to Georgia College and State University. That is in Milledgeville, Georgia. Um, very small. It's a public liberal arts college. I originally went there intending to major in psychology, but I, I was spending a lot of my time in my psychology courses, kind of like I would write stories in the margins of my notes. And one day I was like, you know, if this is what I want to do, why don't I just do it? Mm -hmm. So I switch my major to creative writing and I it's tricky because I don't feel like you have to go to a program in order to become a writer you can certainly get published without the program but at least for me it did help me develop a lot of self-discipline mm -hmm. because we had deadlines we had two or three pieces we had to write a week so I got used to kind of sitting down and churning churning things out right um the hardest thing I would say was dealing with the fact that they wanted me to write literary fiction because I'm, I'm not super interested in that. Right. Um, I, I definitely think that some people, you know, do a great job writing it and some people really love to read it, but that wasn't me. And I, I kind of just had to like go along with what my professors were saying just until the program was up, even knowing, you know, that once it was over, I was going to write whatever I wanted to write. Um, but I, I definitely think that takes some stubbornness and some tenacity because if you're not sure of what you want to do it's really easy to be swayed yeah I, that was my experience my first year of college too I was in a program that was really focused on literary fiction so it was nice when I like I transferred schools and I that went, went to like this college that wasn't as focused on creative writing so that they didn't have as many rules or structure around it right I was kind of able to do whatever I wanted to but I think I mean I've heard a lot that people who write and learn to write short stories in that kind of context learn to really like short stories and I don't know. I never got good at writing short stories because I've only ever written like two or three, I think for that first year of school. So I can imagine that it was good to have that pressure to learn how to do that. Cause I think it's a different art than novel writing, but it's also something that's really, it's, it's really cool to be able to tell stuff shortly in a very, yes. like, yeah. And so it was great to learn how to kind of critique and learn from my peers because I mean, now I have beta readers and I have critique partners and I, love getting their feedback, but I definitely think, you know, if you don't know how to get feedback or you're not used to getting feedback, a lot of times there's a temptation to kind of turn it off or to take what they say and really, you know, take it to heart and use it to criticize yourself and feel bad about yourself. So I would say that that's another good thing I took from the program is just the experience of getting critiques. Totally. Did you do creative writing in high school going up to college as well? Uh, my high school didn't have any kind of creative writing, anything. I always loved my English courses. Um, anytime my English class had some kind of creative writing exercise, I loved those. And I was in theater, which kind of feels like it's related. So was um, I. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I did, I think I started writing, I wrote my first book when I was like 12 mm -hmm. um, in a composition book. Uh, <laughs> between between classes I would just add on to the book and I don't I don't even know where it is now but it was just kind of a thing to see if I could do it mm -hmm. um and I've been doing NaNoWriMo for as long as I can remember oh, yeah yeah so that that's just kind of like my heart I feel like is in novels but lately I have really been loving short stories mm -hmm. Well, it's really cool that you can do both. And I know you've also written plays, right, too? Yes. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's cool that you are comfortable in all these different forms of fiction and then you can employ them to tell the stories that you want. Because I feel like there are certain stories that work really well as books and then other story ideas that work better as other forms. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what are three concrete things that you learned about writing horror that you think helped you learn how to scare readers the most, if you have like three main tips? So this is going to be kind of subjective to the type of horror you're writing, but for me, I write less slasher. Um, if there's gore, it tends to be body horror or it's, you know, it's not like people attacking each other for the most part. It's like ghosts and monsters and things like that. So um, for me, I, the best advice I can give people is number one, write what scares you. If you 
think about something and it gives you nightmares, that's absolutely something you should write in, in your work because it means that it resonates with you and it will resonate with readers. It'll come across as more genuine. Mm -hmm. I would also say, don't be afraid to really draw out the tension. There's in the era of jump scares, I think there's a tendency for people to be like, they want to be as loud as fast as possible and like the biggest scare they can, but it's sometimes it's a lot more rewarding to just draw that sense of dread out through the piece and then at the very end have some kind of twist. Oh yeah. That's my philosophy anyway. And then uh, the third one I would say is don't be afraid to use tropes. There's nothing wrong with tropes and cliches. The tropes are typically loved by readers. So if you use some tropes, you're okay. Um, you know, have fun with them. Don't be afraid to mix it up and maybe put a unique spin spin on it. But definitely like, you know, if you want to use the final girl trope, but you don't want to come across as cliche, don't worry about it. Because mm -hmm. mostly what I've noticed, especially in horror, is that people are such diehard fans that they, they just eat everything up. So any, any content you can give them tends to be good. Right. Could you talk a little bit about tropes and like what a trope is? Right. So a trope is kind of not like a recurring theme, but sort of a recurring motif um, in a story or novel or piece of media. So the example I just gave the final girl trope within horror, there's this idea that, you know, there's this female lead presented early on in the movie or the book and then she's the one who survives all the brutal killings or whatever ends up happening and that's she becomes the final girl mm -hmm. um, and that is a popular trope in horror I mostly see it in movies but I have seen it in some books lately which which I'm excited about yeah I read one short story that was like an inversion of the final girl trope once that was really cool I'm forgetting the name I'll see if I can put it in the description of the video once I edit it together but mm -hmm. yeah, there, do you have like a place that you like to find tropes? Do you like keep a list of ones that you like as you read or is there like an online database that has lists? So I, I mostly keep them in my head because I, I consume a lot of media, but you can look at, there's this website, tvtropes.com. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to waste a whole day on there, it's really <laughs> easy. You just go in and you can look up different tropes and they have, you know, specific names for things maybe that you didn't know were tropes. Um, I like to go in there, like if I'm watching a really good TV show, I'll put a show in there and I'll go in there and see all the things that, all the tropes it has listed for that TV show. Well, that's cool that they arrange it like based on which show. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And then it'll also show you other examples. So, you know, let's say you really like the final girl trope, you can go in there and find it and then it'll have a list of different, uh, different media that contains that trope. Oh, I can totally see myself spending days on that. <laughs> yeah, it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it. I used to like think of story ideas, like I'd mash tropes together and like try to take them, but I would always just like write down things that I found when I was reading or watching movies. That's really cool that there's a database. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been on it in a few years, so that's that's the only caveat I would give, but last I checked, it was great. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. So what are you most scared of personally in books and movies? What really gets to you? I feel like I have really weird fears because I have like some of the same fears as everyone else, but then there's really specific visceral things that get me. So I can handle body horror most of the time, but something about eyeballs and bones, I just, I don't like, I don't yeah. like it. Even um, my partner and I were rewatching House and that's, that's not horror, obviously, but there, there was an episode recently where they were like operating on someone's eyeball and I was like I can't I can't look at this I'm gonna be sick <laughs> um and I mean like I'm afraid of clowns but I don't think that's as fun because everyone's afraid of clowns clowns are creepy um, I, I like I watched yeah. that documentary on that um like serial killer I forget his name the clown guy um uh, John Wayne Gacy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, it's, He's it's super creepy yeah <laughs> yeah um I don't know i I'm claustrophobic so that's a big that's a big thing um if if a book takes place in a cave or underwater that automatically makes me nervous um otherwise I th there's this big thing that I've seen in horror lately I don't know if it's a trope or a theme or what how you would describe it but lately it's the idea of sacrifice having to give up something mm -hmm. um some part of yourself or something you love in order to serve greater good and that, that always scares me because I don't know what I would ever do in those situations. And right. whenever a, a character encounters those, I can't help but think like, what would I do? And kind of 
I don't know. I always project myself onto the characters in that moment. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of fear that's wrapped up in like unknowns and also in places where you don't have any control. Like when you're trying to imagine yourself in those situations, it's yes. pretty scary. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Do you like, do you, so do you read or watch more? Like, how do you consume your horror media? Is it mostly through books or mostly through movies? Um, it's a little, it's a little of both. I minored in film in college. So that's kind of where my love of movies came from. Uh, but lately I've been doing more reading than watching just because I read right before I go to bed. So it's every night versus actually taking the time to sit down and watch a movie. I have to really commit to it. Um, I'm easily distracted. So that's that for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, recently, the last horror movie I saw was The New Candyman, and it was very good. I've been seeing a lot of reviews for that, like different authors on Instagram are being like, oh, I love this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm gonna have to sit down and watch that. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. I love the original, though, so I'm biased. <laughs> yeah, I just finished binging the Fear Street movies. Like all oh, the- they're so good. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> yeah, um, so in your opinion, what makes a good horror book? For me, personally, again- Horror is highly subjective, but for me, what kind of gets me is I have to feel connected to the characters. Mm -hmm. Um, They have to feel real to me. And then, you know, if you can make me believe that your characters are real, I pretty much go along with whatever else you set up in the story. Mm -hmm. Um, So even if there's a character in a situation that I have a hard time imagining, if I like the character, I want them to succeed no matter what. And my fears, their fears will be my fears. Right. Yeah, no, that's I, that's like why a lot of slasher horror that doesn't that isn't super character focused doesn't really get me. Like it's gross in the moment when you see like someone's head being put through like a meat grinder, but like if you don't really care about that person, it doesn't land the same way. Yeah, same here. I'm not big on slashers for that reason. Yeah. Do you have a favorite horror book and a favorite horror movie? Oh, I feel like uh, both of them change all the time, but <laughs> my favorite horror book for the longest time has been Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. Oh, I have that book and I started it, but I haven't finished it. Yeah, it's it's very good. And my favorite horror movie is Candyman, from, but the 1992 one. Not that the new one isn't good. It's just that one's been my favorite for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Why are those your favorite? Um, It's character. I'm pretty sure most of it's character. Mm-hmm. Uh, Candyman, I like the idea of there being this larger than life urban legend thing that comes after people and it's all about you know the power of belief and the power of going into a community and sort of changing it I don't want to go too much into candy man lore or anything but um the story in that one feels like so, the world feels so much bigger than the movie itself mm-hmm. and I really like that and um I like the main character in that and I really sympathize with her and everything she goes through for a head full of ghosts same idea um I really think Paul Tremblay does a phenomenal job world building and his care, his main character in that one, she, it's weird to watch her go through this because she, um, I don't know how far you've cut into it. So I'm trying to be like careful, but (laughs) you know, there's this TV crew that's filming her and her family's lives. And it's this really weird time in her life when she's trying to figure out who she is. And then there's all this stuff happening with her sister and she doesn't know if her sister's going to be okay. And so it's just very, He's very good at making the stakes clear and making them personal. So what do you think the difference is between writing horror movies, horror, like books, and then horror plays? Are there different ways that you approach them? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so when I get an idea for a story, typically I, I can tell whether it's going to be a novel or a play or a short story. Um, with my plays, it's tricky because everything has to be shown you can't, you don't have any room to really express characters, you know, internal monologue or anything like that, unless you have them talking to the audience, but that's kind of weird. I don't like doing that. Uh, <laughs> so everything that happens has to be concrete and it has to be, you know, if, if there's a relationship that's struggling, you can't just say the relationship is struggling. You have to show the couple fighting. And if there's, you know, a ghost terrorizing the family, you have to have objects falling down and stuff you can't just say there's a ghost because you can't see the ghost right (laughs) yeah it's and obviously sight is much more prevalent for a play than in a book in a book you kind of have freer reign to kind of jump in and out of people's heads and um, express things through symbols and things like that right 
Yeah. So it sounds like the plays are kind of similar to movies. Like, yes. Yeah. Except I guess you can't have as much or any CGI. <laughs> you have the ghost coming, yeah. pushing stuff off unless you have somebody dressed up as a ghost, which probably wouldn't make it as scary as intended. <laughs> no, no. Uh, in the script for my play Unboxed, I never, I never have you see, see the ghost because I, I don't want people like, I don't want to see a production where someone comes out in a sheet and like knocks paintings <laughs> over and stuff. I can't, I can't deal with it. And I don't think it's scary. Yeah. Um, I think it would, it would ruin make it. it can't be really quick. Um, so which, do you have a favorite to write out of all the different styles or mediums of story? Um, God, it's hard. I really like plays because I can kind of, usually how I write a play is how I can see it staged out in my head. But mm -hmm. the only problem with that is not as many people want to read plays. And especially right now, people aren't really performing them. Right. So I can't, I feel like I can't really put them out there um, and have them appreciated right now. My heart has always been in novellas and novels and longer form fiction because I, I feel like I get more time to run around and play around with mm -hmm. it. So I probably novels. Yeah, me too. I just, it's like short stories don't hold my attention as much. Like I just really need to get really invested in the world and the characters. I don't mm -hmm. know why. <laughs> I'm the same um, way. Yeah. So what is the scariest book you've ever written and why? That's, that's a really hard question for me to answer because a lot of my stuff doesn't scare me, but I, I think what I have written scares me in different ways. Um, for example, the trick or treater, I wrote a monster for that one and he's pretty scary um, just because I don't know, just the idea and picturing him kind of creeps me out, even though I made him up. Um, and then with my upcoming book, Mouthful of Ashes, it's kind of a commentary on grief and loss. And there's some, there's some pretty dark stuff the characters deal with in that, that scares me just because it's most of it is stuff that could actually happen. So it, it's scarier to me than the monsters almost. I agree. That, that was my whole philosophy when I wrote my book too. I just like, I was using ghosts and I wanted to bring the supernatural element in, but I thought it would be interesting to experiment with like, what if the ghosts were not the source of the horror? And, right. Like, people around us were like the actual sources of the horror. Yeah. So it's really amazing what you can do with different supernatural elements and how you can use them to like make commentary on different like trauma and different things and ways that people interact with each other. Right, right. Yeah. So do you have, like, what is your best piece of advice for somebody that aspires to become a horror writer? Uh, I feel like everybody says this, but read a lot of books. Um, read a lot in your genre, especially so you can keep track of the tropes and the trends, what works and what doesn't. Um, you should also read outside your genre, though. Like, I always recommend people read um, some poetry, just so you can kind of get a sense of rhythm and how you can use language to kind of make things flow better. Uh, oh. And I mean, just read everything you can get your hands on that applies not just for horror authors, but for pretty much any authors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, poetry is amazing like that. Like I took a poetry class just to experiment with like the ways the language fits together. Mm -hmm. And my professor told me that my poet, like all of the poetry that I wrote was way too literal, like to really like be as art, like she was really, really challenging me to try to be a little bit more creative with language, but it really helps like stretch your brain in a way and like different writing muscles you don't use when writing fiction for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I also took a poetry class and I got the same criticism. So I think that's <laughs> funny. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of the main topic of this video, but what do you think the secret is to writing horror that scares your readers? I think the secret is getting to the most realistic emotional core that you can. Mm -hmm. So even if you're writing a story that's got like all these ghosts or witches or you know, all these things that aren't necessarily real. If you have a main character with a concrete motivation mm -hmm. and you make their stakes really clear uh, emotionally and otherwise, that will come through to your reader and you can pretty much put them in almost any situation and it, it can scare somebody that way. Yeah, absolutely. That's really well said. Well, Thank you so much for doing this interview and for chatting with me about horror. I feel like I learned a lot and I know that the people who are watching this video have also learned a lot. Where can people watching this video find you online? Oh God, I feel like I'm everywhere. I, <laughs> I, have, a, I have a website, it's BriannaMorganBooks.com. Um, I'm on Twitter as Bri Morgan Books and Instagram as Brianna Morgan Books. And I have a TikTok now. I'm on TikTok <laughs> as Brianna Morgan Books. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much again. Um, it was really a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.